Okay, so in order to be as authentic as possible, here are the three things that you're going to want to pay attention to. One is being aware of emotions and behavioral urges. Two is understanding your values. And three is to make the choice to either move towards those values or to move away from those values. Number one is emotional awareness, being aware of our emotions and also being aware of the behaviors that our emotions tend to lead us to. If we don't have awareness, we don't have power and we don't have any choice, which is why cultivating a mindfulness practice is so very important. Mindfulness helps us to pay attention to the present moment, to, to better kind of get in tune with what's going on in the present moment, what's going on within ourselves in that moment, how we're responding, basically everything that's related to the present moment, mindfulness can really help us with. If we're not aware of our current experience, how we are responding to to ourselves, the experience, our emotions. If we're not aware of these things, then we're essentially living on autopilot. And this can be in every area of our life, relationships, job, school, pretty much everything. And if we're not living with any awareness, then like I said, we're kind of on autopilot. We don't really have choice in our life then. Things are just kind of happening to us and we don't really know why we aren't really feeling fulfilled, but but we're not. And we're definitely not feeling like our truest self most of the time. If you're wanting to live an intentional value-driven life, then awareness and mindful awareness are the skills that are going to bring this into fruition. There are many different ways that you can cultivate self-awareness. These can be things like meditation, journaling, or engaging in daily check-ins with yourself. A check-in generally just consists of pausing for a few moments during your day or multiple times during your day and asking yourself a couple of questions. These questions can be something like, what am I feeling right now? What is going on in the world around me and how am I responding to it? Or what am I needing right now and how can I best meet that need? If you're wanting some additional ideas for these informal type of mindful check-in prompts, then you can check out this video. Number two is understanding our values. Our values and priorities can definitely change throughout our life, especially in those young adult teen years and college years where we're really kind of moving away from our family of origin and we're starting to understand and learn who am I and what do I want my life to look like apart from that family of origin. And as we're going through those really big transitions, it's very helpful to kind of reevaluate, recheck in with what we really think is important, what we value and what we prioritize in our life. There's something called a values inventory that can be exceptionally helpful for doing this type of re-evaluation type of thing. Maybe we do something like this every couple of years just to check in and see where are my values, where are my priorities, and are my actions and choices aligned with these values or are they not so much? I don't currently have a resource designed to help you identify your values, but there are free tools online to help you do so. So I'm going to leave a link for one of those down in the description if you're wanting to explore and understand your values a bit better. The third and final piece that we're talking about today is making the choice to either go towards our values or to go away from them. And again, we can only make a choice if we have awareness, which is why we were talking about that as the first critical piece. In acceptance and commitment therapy, we use something called a choice point to help us become aware of what behaviors, what choices are leading me towards the life that I want to lead and the person that I want to be and which ones are leading me away from those things. Even when we feel very strongly one way or another, these, these emotions can lead to behavioral urges, right? They can lead us to engaging in behaviors or actions that aren't necessarily going to be helpful for us. But the important thing is, is that we don't have to act on every single one of those behavioral urges if we don't want to. If they're not aligned with our values, then we have the choice to say, yes or no to those urges. For instance, if we are feeling really anxious about a social gathering, but we also have the value of really strong relationships with the people that are gonna be at that social gathering, we have a choice. Am I going to kind of appease my anxiety and maybe not go to that social gathering? Or am I gonna stay true to that value of wanting to you know, dive in or cultivate those relationships even further by facing my anxiety and going to that social gathering. This is definitely not an easy process, right? This is going to require having that awareness and also having the courage to 
in this case, face our fears and going towards the things that scare us in order to align our actions with our values and what's most important to us. What's known as that choice point is essentially the the pause, the space between recognizing our current experience and then making a behavioral choice. And it's important to note that that behavioral choice can be external, but it can also be an internal action as well. And honestly, as we start to slow down this process of becoming aware of what this current experience is and what actions or what choices do I have here essentially, then we start to recognize, you know, some of these choices are are going to lead us towards that life that we want to lead and some of them are honestly going to be leading us away from them and we get to just be super honest with ourselves here and ask you know am i actually aligning my my actions my choices with the things that i value or or am i not doing so and if i'm not doing so then how can i start to realign with what I say that I value. And it might take a little bit of time, but as you engage with this type of work and get into, you know, this awareness, this self-awareness, then you are going to start to better understand quickly, you know, what what actions, what choices are going to be leading you towards the life that you want to lead and which ones are going to be very much leading you away from that life. So in the case of anxiety, when we are even experiencing a lot of anxiety or chaos in our life, we still have the choice of how we're going to respond. Are we going to appease that anxiety and is that appeasement going to move us away from the life that we want to lead or the person that we want to be? Or is that appeasement going to lead us away from these things? And if it's going to lead me away from those things, then do I want to do that? Or do I want to face my anxiety head on and still live out my truest values and feel authentic to myself? The amazing thing about this work as well is the more we engage with it, the more empowered that we feel because now we're able to actually make the choice. Yes, we're aware of that choice and what's going on within our behaviors and our values and all that good stuff, but now that we're aware of it, we have power. We can feel empowered to actually make choices that are going to have a lasting impact on our life and also just our internal sense of self, of being able to be our most authentic self. I hope that this topic has been helpful for you guys. And as always, if you have thoughts, I'd love to hear them. Feel free to drop some comments down below or hit that like button or maybe even that subscribe button. And don't forget to grab your free copy of the Calm Guide. Again, I'll leave a link for that down in the description and I will see you guys next time.